So in the last video, we really left off pretty much on a boring note, I'm not gonna lie. I showed you guys how to set up your project and I showed you how to import your footage along with organizing it inside of DaVinci Resolve. So in this video, let's go ahead and tackle the edit tab, which is pretty simple in itself and it's it can be as complicated as you wanna make it, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the absolute basics to get you up and running and editing your videos with ease. So let's first go over the interface before we get in too deep. And I wanna show you guys the tabs you have found along the top. <clears throat> Now, the thing I loved about DaVinci Resolve compared to other NLEs is the fact that they just gave you all of the tools you needed to access for this particular workflow. So obviously you have your media pool tab, which is currently active since it is white and not in that kind of grayish color. And um, that is obviously showing our footage. And if you wanted to, you could easily go ahead and import some additional footage here. We could just drag it in. Um, I don't need any additional footage right now, but you could go ahead and drag it inside of the edit tab. So it's really nice. Let's say you finished your entire timeline and now it's just up to cleaning up and uh, doing those final little frame edits here and there. You can just remove that tab entirely and then you get more of your workspace. The media pool, we're gonna need to keep that open for right now. You have your effects library where of course you have your video transitions, audio transitions, um, even some titles, pretty much everything you'd really need for uh, basic editing and setting up. And of course, it doesn't have anything too intricate because for more advanced transitions, you're obviously gonna need additional software, which could be Fusion. And they do have a link between the two, just kind of a uh, random note. Fusion is basically Blackmagic Design's version of After Effects. And they did a phenomenal job. Like I said, they have a link that you can send project files to back and forth and uh, really easy to use. And we'll probably do that in a future video. Anyways, with that being said, you have all of the essentials you need right here in your effects library. You have your edit index window, which will help you organize your project. Um, and you can organize it in whatever way you want. And then of course you have your mixer for audio where you can actually set your pan, you can adjust your volume. And this is for really quick stuff. So that way, while you're watching your video, you can do some quick adjustments. Now I do wanna remind you, you do have a dedicated audio tab at the bottom right here. It's called Fairlight Audio. And this is relatively new to DaVinci Resolve. But again, this is for just really quick, rough mix downs. And uh, for the more in-depth mix downs and adjustments, you can use the Fairlight Audio tab. So we'll go ahead and turn off the mixer. You have your metadata where you can select a clip and with that clip selected, you can see all the details about it. And finally, you have your inspector window. Now it says I have nothing to inspect because I do not have anything in my current timeline. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag a clip down just to show you what we have. Okay, so inside of the inspector window, you'll see nothing is still being inspected until I click the particular clip and it will be highlighted with this big red box and you'll see you have pretty much everything you'd need to adjust the clip. So if you were to have clips on top of one another, and I'll just duplicate this for the sake of this exam, or, uh, for the sake of the tutorial. And to duplicate, you can literally hold Alt on your keyboard or Command on a Mac and just left click and uh, drag it on over. So I'm gonna open up on top. Okay, so I have the same shot on top of one another. You have all of your blend modes. I'm gonna go ahead and use overlay and you'll see it just adds contrast and you can see I can zoom in or out. So if I wanted to create this weird kind of haze dream effect, I could zoom out or zoom in a tiny bit. And of course you can adjust everything within the inspector. Basic transformations, you can crop, you can crop left. If you're trying to do comparisons or something like that. So pretty much everything you'd need inside of your editor to adjust the particular clip. So you of course can do the same with your audio. You can adjust the EQ on kind of on the fly. And obviously since we are in, sim or in just edit mode, you are not going to be able to adjust the color because you have a dedicated color tab, which we're gonna tackle in the next video. So we brought our shot in. That is <coughs> pretty much 
it for the user interface. Of course, you have your tools here. You have your basic selection. You have your trim edit mode, your eraser. You have insert clip. All of this stuff you can play with. But I want to show you guys how to import your footage. And then we're going to go into more detail after that. So I'm going to go ahead and build out a timeline. But what I want to do is I first want to start and show you a few different ways that you can add your footage to the timeline. So first, you can actually drag your shot onto the timeline. Now, once it's on the timeline, you're gonna see you have a few options as soon as you mouse over the beginning of the clip and the end of the clip. So you'll see I get this kind of bracket and this will just let me drag and adjust the length of my clip. So I could actually scrub through and we'll find a good place for me to start. So let's just start right here. And what I can do is simply drag all the way to this particular timeline um, marker. And then we'll go ahead and move the clip over. And then I can continue scrubbing through, finding a place I wanna transition, probably right about there. It's always nice and quick tip, it's always nice to do a jump cut in between um, motion. So you don't wanna have their foot completely down, but it is just kind of handy to have the cut be in the middle of when they're doing something. So if they're walking, you wanna be in mid step so that way you can transition into another step. So we have that initial, we have the first clip um, adjusted, we have the length we want, and then I can hit space bar to play back. And that's looking nice. Actually, I'm gonna cut it a little bit more. There we go, keep it really short. So just walking and in mid step, we're gonna end the clip. So we have our first clip set. Another way of adding a clip would be for me to go into my media pool, double click on a particular clip, or I could just drag it into my preview window. And you can scrub through. So you'll see right here, we're gonna go mid step again. So right about here, a little bit further probably. And we're gonna set an endpoint. Now to do this, you can use the hotkey I you can scrub a little further and you can use the hotkey O to set an out point. Now the really cool thing is furthermore in this window you have these two icons where you have the option to drag the footage or just the footage down to your timeline or you can drag just the audio if you want or you can just drag the clip in general by simply clicking on in the middle of the clip and dragging it down. So you'll see we have our edit where she's just walking and then it clips or it jumps to the next cut. Now another cool way of doing this is you can drag a clip to the timeline window and you're gonna see based upon where I have my marker, which you'll see it's right towards the very beginning, you can insert, you can overwrite, you can replace, fit to fill, all of this, but I'm gonna go ahead and insert this clip and then I'm gonna trim it in the actual timeline window. So I have, this looks really good to start. Now I'm gonna teach you another hotkey, which is B, and that'll open up your razor blade. So with a razor blade, you can literally trim and cut the entire clip. And this gives you the ability to highlight the clip. And you can do one of two things. You can actually do, or just hit backspace on your keyboard, which will delete it, but it will still leave the blank space, which you can again remove with another backspace after you highlight it. Or you can actually click it and then hit delete on your keyboard and this will remove it entirely and this is called a ripple cut. Now I know most other editors have the same thing um, but DaVinci Resolve's method was a little bit different to me so just know that delete is your ripple cut while backspace is just your standard cut. So I have the beginning that I want and then we're gonna continue on down and I'm gonna go ahead and cut it here. B to get my razor blade and A for my selection tool. Select the clip and I'm just gonna hit delete and that will actually bump all of the clips that were a little further in the timeline up against the previous clip. So we have our timeline, it's starting to look pretty good and uh, again, way too long. What am I thinking guys? Don't let me do this. <laughs> So that is just a few different ways. And of course, like I showed you, you can drag everything here. Now, let's say we wanted to flesh out more of our timeline. I have Jennifer kind of walking through the trees 
and uh, let's go ahead and trim that just a little bit. So I'm gonna use just a few different methods. And like I said, it's, it's all about what you want to do for your particular workflow and how you like working. So for me, I actually do like editing inside of the editor. I feel like this window up here, while nice, um, I personally don't find it all too um, necessary <laughs> when editing. Oh, and something I should have said, when I was setting my in and out points, if you want to remove your in and out points, because even if you try to drag that same clip, um, you'll see this tiny white bar. And that's just letting you know that you've set your actual in and out points and you can't access the rest of the clip. So if you wanna remove them, you just simply hit Alt-I to remove the in point and Alt-O to remove the out point. So that way you can actually drag the entire clip again, but that's just if you really need to do that. So building out our timeline still, um, sorry for the random note, but that is basically it. And what I also wanted to show you is you have these really cool tools. Um, you can zoom in, of course, and of course you have your markers if you need to set scenes or anything like that. But the coolest thing that I liked was these little white tabs. And I kind of wanted to show you that you can do this in your timeline and you can do it for both the video and the audio. But these are quick ways of fading in and out. So you're gonna see, let's just pretend I wanted to have a fade in between these two clips. I go ahead and hit play, it fades out and fades in. And it's just really easy. You can see the frame count um, as I adjust it. So you'll see we have 24 frames. So it counts each frame. So 14 frames all the way up to one second worth, which is 24 frames. And then you can adjust it from there. So that's a really easy way. So if you were to have something right here where you want to have a crossover between Jennifer walking um, through the woods and the clip above it, you can simply use that same fade effect. And it's really easy to use, and I loved how easy DaVinci Resolve made that. And again, you can do the same for audio. So let's go ahead and dig into the music. I'm gonna go ahead and drag it and zoom out. And then you can zoom in and out by holding Control minus or plus. So I'm gonna use Control minus. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this up towards the very beginning and hit Control plus to zoom in and we're gonna make the audio fade in. So on playback, let's go ahead and listen a little bit. And you'll hear we have our audio with this nice fade in. Now, just know this is not a linear fade in. Um, what DaVinci Resolve has done is they've actually created an arc for you. So it is not just a linear transition, it actually has a little bit of an easing out method. So just be aware of that when you're using that particular tool, but that is pretty much it for the edit tab. The only thing I'd like to show you is um, just in case you need to change a particular frame rate to a shot, I wanna show you guys how you can do that and I wanna show you how you can also adjust it in the timeline. First, an easier approach would be if I were to actually use, let's use this clip where Jennifer is just kind of looking away from the camera. All I have to do is highlight that clip, right click it, and you're gonna see you have clip attributes. So you're gonna see you have all of the attributes for the audio, the time code, the name even, and you can even choose the display name, but you can choose the video frame rate. Now, everything here was shot in 96 frames per second, and because of the GH4, it actually changes the frame rate back to 24 frames per second. So it's kind of handy and kind of annoying at the same time, but that's just my camera. I'm gonna go ahead and select 96 frames per second, so that way I can actually view the clip in real time. So I've just adjusted the video frame rate, and you can do this for multiple clips. So let's say I wanted to do it for this or actually this shot right here as well, I can highlight both of them, go to clip attributes, and you'll see it says custom, but we're gonna go to 96 frames per second, hit okay, and I'm just gonna drag this right here on the timeline, and you'll see it goes from slow-mo to real time, where I have my shaky hands and Jennifer just looking away from the camera. But that's an easy way to change the frame rate. Now, another way of doing this would be to right clip or right click the clip in the timeline and you're gonna see you have retime controls and retime curve, but we're gonna wanna use retime controls for this. So let's go ahead and zoom in again, control plus on your keyboard. 
and you're gonna see these blue arrows and then 100% here. Now what this does is it tells you the clip is playing at 100% speed. Now, since I know this was shot at 96 frames per second, I'm gonna go ahead and stretch it, make it slower, not quite a full 96 frames per second, but you can see now it's playing at 49% speed. Let me go ahead and adjust that to 50, and let's go ahead, do my playback. I don't know why I did that, there we go. And then, there we go. We're slowed down probably to about 48 frames per second right now, and we could furthermore, or we could, slow it even further if we needed. So that's just a nice way of being able to adjust your um, clip speed and doing slow motion and adjusting frame rates. But that is pretty much all there is to the editing tab. And of course you could do a mix down if you wanted to adjust your audio. You'll see I have my music playing. I wanna turn that down a little bit on playback. So as you can see, Editing is just super easy to use with DaVinci Resolve. It's not too complicated. Um, if you're wanting to look and see how to adjust your timeline and trims, you have all of these hotkeys here. And again, this is purely for you guys to explore. This is just the basics. I wanted to show you at least my workflow, which I will totally admit is not optimal, but it's something I am comfortable with and have made work for me moving forward. Like you can see, you have select, you have the ability to ripple start playhead, which I learned the other day. Um, basically, let's say I wanted to edit this clip right here and I wanted to delete this first half where she's not looking at the camera entirely and she's playing with her hair. All I'd have to do is hit control shift and then the left angle bracket and it will delete the first half and ripple cut the second half to butt up against the rest of my timeline. So it's really cool stuff like that. You can just go through and like I said, look at all the hotkeys. You can see all the different um, hotkeys you have for adding a transition and even playback, all of that. It's just really cool. And yes, you can play forward with L and play in reverse with J. Um, I rarely play in reverse, so that's probably why I didn't mention it in this video. But go ahead and dig through. The edit tab is extremely easy to use, extremely user-friendly. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and build out this timeline for the next segment, which is the color tab. So go ahead and uh, click on that video as well. <laughs> Thanks a bunch for tuning in you guys and hopefully this is helping you build and formulate ideas for your next video. So again, thank you for tuning in and I will see you in the next video.